Hello again and welcome back to the Fat Fish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and today I wanted to talk a bit about scale theory and kind of what makes a major scale a major scale, what makes a, a minor scale a minor scale. Something that was prompted from a, a discussion I was having with someone I'm giving a little bit of coaching to at the minute, They're sort of starting off learning uh, scale theory which is great and they kind of just checked in with me and said like I've been looking at some scales, just want to confirm this is a C major these are the notes, this is a C minor, these are the notes. And they got it right, but it kind of made me realise there's a trap that people often fall into. And if I remember right, it's a trap that I fell into myself when I was first learning uh, scale theory myself, just from uh, like from books and so on uh, years ago. And it's about recognising the difference between scales being made up of, of notes and scales being made up of, so like, notes that are certain distances apart. I'll explain what I mean. We always tend to home in on C major as being the the scale that, is, that we use as an example when we talk about the major scale. And C major contains C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. So we say C major is those notes, and then often just qualify that note names, no sharps or flats. And it's that no sharp, sharps or flats thing. It was a comment that uh, the student had uh, had made uh, that made me, made me realise it's very easy to just make the assumption that no sharps or flats means major scale, and that's absolutely not the case. So that if you fall into that trap, what you're going to do is you think, well, the major scale starting on a note, so instead of C, let's say, starting on A, start on that note and go up using notes that have no sharps or flats. So starting on A, we'd go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Now that's not, absolutely not, A major, because it's got no sharps or flats in it doesn't make it a, a, major, a major scale. What makes it a major scale is the distances between the notes. So if you think about what we did with the C major scale, we started on the root note of C, we went up two semitones to get to a D, up another two semitones to get to an E, up another semitone to get to an F, up two semitones from there to get to a G, up another two semitones from there to get to an A, up another two semitones from there to get to a B, and then up one semitone to get back to a C. It gives us a scale that's got that distinctive sound. That's the major scale. So to make an A major scale, we start on an A root note, and we go up by the same set of intervals from an A up two semitones takes us to a B up two semitones from B takes us to C sharp up a semitone from C sharp takes us to D up two semitones from D takes us to an E up two semitones from an E takes us to an F sharp up two semitones from an F sharp to, takes us to a G sharp and then up one semitone from G sharp takes us back to A. You can hear that scale there has the same sound to it as the C major scale. So start on C, start on A. That second scale, we've got a C sharp in it, we've got an F sharp in it, and we've got a G sharp in it. But it doesn't stop it being a major scale, because the major scale is the scale that has that set of intervals in it. So, don't get too hung up on note names being the scale, it's about the intervals between them. The notes are important in that when you look, you're playing a scale, you need to know what notes are in it, so you know what, how they relate to the chords it might be playing over the top of, or, or how you, what, note, what notes you actually need to build chords. But actually looking at it as a scale in itself, the scale is actually much more about the intervals than it is about the, the notes. And from there, let's go on and talk about the minor scale. 
Now the person I was talking to would say, okay, I've sussed out the major scale, uh, the C major. I've also sussed out the C minor scale. So C minor is C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. And that's absolutely right. But again, it's not um, a minor scale because it's got a flat note or an accent note on the third, the sixth, or the seventh. As such, what makes it a minor scale is the fact it's this, taking the notes of the major scale and lowering the third, the sixth, and the seventh degree by a semitone. So in the case of C, this is C major. And you could think of this having a formula like this. And the formula of the minor scale is this. So if we take the notes of C major and apply that formula, we end up with these notes, which are the notes of C minor. So if we apply the same thinking to our scale beginning on A, we've got an A major scale, which has this formula. Yeah, that's the formula of the major scale. The formula of the minor scale is this. So if we apply that and modify the, the A major scale, we end up with these notes, and those are the notes of the A minor scale. Now, coincidentally, they happen to be the same notes as the notes of C major. Um, there's a reason for that. That's kind of outside the scope of this video. Really, all I want to point out here is the importance of thinking about scales as being formulas. And any scale can be expressed sort of compared to the major. So here we talked about the minor scales having a formula 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. Take the notes of the, like the parallel major scale and modify the 3rd, the 6th and the 7th degrees by lowering them by semitone. That scale that we're talking about here is the minor scale. It's actually what's called the natural minor. There's a couple of other minor scales that you could come across. One's the harmonic minor. The harmonic minor has the formula 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, and a natural 7th. But there's also another one you might come across sometimes is the melodic minor, which has got the formula 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the octave. Okay, so if you haven't done a whole lot of scale theory yet, you might not have come across the harmonic minor or the melodic minor. So be aware that there, there are other scales out there and then we get into really get into with there's modes and all sorts of things, but they're all expressed as a formula kind of relative to the, the major scale, which is why it's important to be familiar with the major scale and the harmonies of it, um, because you can take the same principles and then apply it to, to other scales. Okay, so the important thing to take away from this is to remember that although scales are groups of notes, it's really best to think of scales not so much just as the notes, but think of them as a formula. It's a number of semitones between notes, starting from a, a root note and, and working up. And if you think of them as like having a formula, it's going to make it a lot easier for, uh, for you to progress with your scale studies. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed it, please click like. If you really enjoyed it, please click subscribe or leave a comment. If you want to leave a question for me, that's probably best to go here, fill in the form, answer your question, and I'll try and answer it in a future video. Uh, now and again, I do see people asking questions in the comments section on YouTube. Thing is, YouTube's not very good at letting me know when people have commented on videos, so it's easy for me to miss things. Uh, don't treat the comment section in YouTube as a conversation with me because it's very easy for me to, to miss things. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.